Good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world in the next 30 minutes. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. Panic grips global markets over fears of loan default by Greece. Sensex falls over 500 points in intraday trade, even as experts allay fears over long-term impact. Two more accused in Madhya Pradesh's Vyapam scam are mysteriously dead, taking the toll now to 25. State Home Minister calls them natural deaths, rejecting demands for a CBI probe. Congress accuses Vasundhara Rajay of illegally occupying the Dholpur Palace along with Lalit Modi through a private company. The BJP denies all allegations. Fifty founding countries, including India, sign an agreement on Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The 60-article pact specifies each member's share and governance structure. And most senior players are rested for India's tour to Zimbabwe. Ajinkya Rahane to lead the team, while Harbhajan Singh and Robin Uthappa make a comeback. Our top story, global stock markets plunged today after Greece shut all its banks for a week, imposing capital controls. This after the ECB decided not to extend emergency funding to Greece, even as it struggles to repay a 1.6 billion euro debt to the IMF by Tuesday. Meanwhile, the European Commission chief said that he felt betrayed by the egotism showed by Greece in the failed debt talks. Asian and European stock markets bled on Monday after Greece shut all its banks ahead of the Tuesday deadline to repay its IMF debt. Banks are expected to remain shut at least until 5th July, the date for referendum proposed by Greek PM Alexis Tsipras to decide a way out of the ongoing crisis. Following a breakdown of talks, the EU chief urged Greece to back a cash for reform package rejected by the government. He also said that Greek proposals were delayed or deliberately altered. In an unusual move, the EU also published the last proposals creditors made before Greece broke off the talks. This is certainly a demanding and comprehensive package, but it is a fair one. There are no wage cuts in this package, no pension cuts in this package. In fact, it's a package which creates more social fairness, more growth, a more modern and transparent public administration. Eurozone leaders have rallied behind Greece so far, but they have warned of serious consequences of a referendum on the terms of the cash for reforms deal. We want alles tun um möglichst Schaden von der Bevölkerung Griechenlands zu wenden. Die Bürger in Griechenland können einem leid tun. Seit heute Morgen sieht man, was es heißt, wenn eine Regierung unverantwortlich handelt. Facing an exit from the euro currency bloc, Greece is set to go for a referendum. The move has angered the international creditors. However, Prime Minister Tsipras is still nailing his hopes on his request for a bailout extension. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. India, too, is facing the heat of the Greek crisis. Markets show, saw a sharp decline today. Sell-offs plunged Sensex down by over 500 points during intraday trading. The finance secretary has said that India is yet to drop a plan to deal with the possible fallouts of the crisis. Here's a report. Worries over Greece sparked a sell-off in the markets on Monday. Sensex plunged over 500 points in early trade before recovering to end at 27,645 points, down by 167 points. Nifty 2 slipped below its crucial psychological level of 8,200 as Greece looked set to default on its debt repayment this week. The centre is yet to finalise a strategy to counter any significant fallout of the crisis. However, it is closely monitoring the developments. I said that everything is, you know, this is a dynamic situation, an evolving situation. So you have, but there is no firm plan, there is a, but it has to be assessed and acted upon as situation develops. Mm -hmm. Nobody can predict what the exact situation will be, so there can be no exact plan to that extent. The road Greece preferred was the taxation way, but what they want is cuts in expenditure. But cuts in expenditure can be 
uh, you know ridiculous I, i should say that it, it can be ridiculous because these kind of mindless fiscal austerity measures leads to humanitarian crisis so far the crisis did not have any direct impact on india but there may be some indirect effect via europe on capital outflows in case there is a firming up of interstates in europe then there may be some outward flows from india market also started realizing that it's not as fearful as we have been thinking so obviously the short position started getting covered and what we see is that only 200 point fall which is not a very substantial fall this is in a this is a normal day for the markets the government is consulting the reserve bank of india to deal with the situation last week rbi governor raghuram rajan had said that the economy is expected to withstand any impact from the crisis in greece he attributed the stability partly to india's foreign exchange reserves which reached a record high of 355.46 billion dollar last month with inputs from kriti mishra bureau report rajya sabha tv and now to the story that's turning more mysterious by the day when the professional examination scam or the vyapam scam emerged in madhya pradesh in 2013 It was seen as just another case of candidates paying their way into jobs in colleges. But two years and 25 deaths later, the irregularities have snowballed into a massive multi-layered scam that promises to uncover some ugly truths. Here are the latest details. 25 people dead so far, all having some connection to the high-profile Madhya Pradesh Professional Examination Board scam. They were all either accused or witnesses in what has come to be known as the Vyapam scam. But the Madhya Pradesh Home Minister sees nothing fishy in their deaths, terming them all as natural. अरे रोज़ ही मरते हैं भाई लोग तो कोई आर बाहर जेल के बाहर भी मरते हैं जेल के अंदर भी मरते हैं जो आया है वो तो जाएगा नो 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 तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने मना कर दिया पूरे व्यापम की जांच को सुप्रीम कोर्ट रद्द कर दिया अब ये मौत को किसी उस से जोड़ना ये जो एक ट्रेंड बन गया है कोई भी घटना हुई और उसको उससे जोड़ना ये उचित नहीं है जांच होना चाहिए Two more accused in the MPPEB scam died in Gwalior and Indor on Sunday. One of those who died, Dr. Rajendra Arya, was accused of helping two students clear pre-medical tests conducted by the MPPEB in 2007 and 2008. The other person who died was Narendra Singh Tomar, an assistant veterinary officer at Raisin, accused of arranging for imposters to write the papers in place of genuine aspirants. इतना सब कुछ होने के बावजूद भी अगर भारतीय जनता पार्टी के नेतृत्व पर उनके कान पे जू न रहेंगे तो ठीक है हम लोग तो अपनी लड़ाई लड़ेंगे इट पेन एवरीबडी टू सी दैट पर्सन हु कैन बी वाइटल फॉर द सेक ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड ट्रायल हैव बीन टारगेटेड एंड दे हैव लॉस्ट देयर लाइफ एंड समबडी वेरी पावरफुल इज एक्टिंग बिहाइंड द सीन एंड डज नॉट वॉन्ट द ट्रूथ to come out the investigation doesn't inspire confidence it it people don't believe in this investigation everybody knows that there is a, this is one of the biggest cover up stories going on go, going on anywhere in the world and nobody 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 today is willing to buy that these deaths are innocent deaths an sit submission to the madhya pradesh high court has said that 23 deceased in the mppeb scam had died unnatural deaths so far however unofficial reports put the number at 40 the most high profile death was that of shailesh yadav the son of madhya pradesh governor ram naresh yadav the governor was himself an accused in the scam before getting relief from the court over 2000 people have been arrested for their involvement in the scam so far bureau report rajya sabha tv All right, for more on this, we're joined by Vivek Tangha, who's a senior lawyer of the Supreme Court, joining us from the capital this evening. Vivek, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, give us a sense. You know, when you see these 25 deaths, unofficially 40 above is what we are learning from reports. And you know, the Home Minister of the state saying that uh, a CBI inquiry is not necessary in this at all. What does this reflect? It it ref- reflects a very trivial approach. according to stf it's 25 deaths according to the chairman of sit it is 30 plus according to newspapers including times of india it it is 40 plus whether it's 25 or 35 or 40 it's the deaths are immense i mean even one death should have made a cbi inquiry started you know hmm. 
I mean, to, to, be, to be wanting a CBI inquiry after 25 deaths and the state not responding is something extraordinary that is happening in Madhya Pradesh. Mm. Of course, we'll go to Supreme Court if need be. We are going to Supreme Court because if the state is defined, we would go to Supreme Court. But the, but the bigger issue is, why are people feel, feeling threatened? It, it was reported in the newspaper some days back. The STF officers are feeling threatened. They're looking for protection, mm. asking for protection of life. Mm. The whistleblowers are, are, are seeking protection of life. The, Mr. Prashant Pate complains that, that he, there is a threat to his life. Anand Rai complains that there is a threat to his life. Now, if there is so much of diabolical engineering taking place in the state, is it even safe, safe to ask the STF to investigate the matter? Hmm. And, and to say that Supreme Court and High Court have approved it? Yes, they did say yes at a point of time. But that was six, eight months back. Hmm. Now, today, things have changed. I mean, so many deaths have taken place. This was never placed before the Supreme Court. So we are sure that if the state doesn't agree, all these facts are placed before the Supreme Court or maybe the High Court in its monitoring may do it on its own. Because we are not before the High Court. We can't go before the High Court as petitioners because in the last writ petition, we have been barred from going to High Court. So Supreme, we, are, can, we can only go to Supreme Court. Now, if, 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 if High Court on its own jurisdiction doesn't do it, so we will go to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court, we are going in the next two, two days. And, and I'm sure we are going to place all these facts that the whole... State is outraged. Mm. There's, a, there's a fear of death looming in the state. We don't know who's going to be the next victim. I'm sure that all the big actors who are in jail are also fearing death. Mm. Now, can you have a good investigation or a good investigation in these circumstances? Another very important fact, there, were ex, there are Excel sheets which have been placed with the Truth Lab report with, with the, before the SIT. In, in, in five days' time, the same STF which, which is overseeing this investigation, gives a report that this truth lab report is uh, fabricated. You don't, you don't call the author of the report. You mm. don't call the person who gave the uh, who submitted the, uh, the CD. Nothing, nothing of that kind. The policemen decide that it's a fabricated report and they send it to High Court. Now, what is happening is frightening, what I'm trying to say. Yes. And, and today, the whole state, the 75 crore people of the state are looking for justice. And, 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 and lastly, I, I would like to say, look at the case of the poor governor, such an old man. Hmm. They, they registered a case, a FIR against him under 120B, 420, 460, all very serious offences. The poor man has to go to the High Court to get an interim order, uh, to get an order. Hmm. He's protected by the High Court because he continues to be a governor despite that case That's under right. Article 361 2. Hmm. And now, once, once High Court has protected him, he's, this protection is only transient till he's governor. Then he, once he's not a governor, he'll be picked up again. Now, can such a person continue as governor? Or he, the governor should have asked for a CBI pro to clear, clear the ground. Everything, I'm, of I'm, course, I'm really yes. surprised. Everything looking shady. I mean, to say happening. the least, everything looking extremely shady here. Uh, you know, one, of, one report, in fact, uh, I was looking through some hmm. tweets as well, and some were saying that this could be the BJP's 2G moment. Uh, not in terms of, you know, loss to the exchequer as such, but, you know, in terms of trying to shield, you know, the accused, trying to prolong the case as much as possible, to not look into the uh, wrongdoings that have been going on in this. And what, according to the STF, is uh, perhaps just 20% of the scam is what has been uncovered so far. Yeah, yeah, that's what, you know, you know the bigger scam is in services. I mean, they, the, what is coming out is only the medical seats, which, which itself is huge. Hmm. But the bigger scam is in transport, in excise, in police recruitment, patwari recruitment in thousands. Nobody's investigating that because the moment you investigate that, who's who of the ruling party would get involved. So today, can we afford to have a, no investigation in such a huge scam where one full generation of youth has hmm. lost opportunity in the state? All right, we'll leave it there for now, Vivek. Thanks so much for joining us and, you know, shedding light into some nitty-gritties of this case, of course. And like you said, you are going to be pursuing and you're going to be, you and, of course, uh, the others are going to be pursuing for a CBI probe into this. It's not for nothing. The Congress is, of course, also trying to blame the state Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan. We'll keep an eye out on developments on this front. Meanwhile, let's head on to the Capitol and the Aam Aadmi Party today's stage protests against the BJP, demanding the resignations of Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Rajay for their alleged help to former IPL Commissioner Lalit Modi. The Congress also stepped up its campaign. Here are the details. The Congress unleashed a fresh batch of accusations against the BJP and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Raje in the Lalit Modi controversy. The party alleged that Raje illegally occupied the Dholpur Palace along with Lalit Modi through a private company. 
राजस्थान सरकार की संपत्ति को इन दो व्यक्तियों ने एक राजस्थान के मुख्यमंत्री और एक भगोड़ा ये भगोड़ा और मुख्यमंत्री का एक खेल रहा है लेन देन रहा है द कांग्रेस क्लेम्स दैट रेवेन्यू डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स बिटवीन 1954 एंड 2010 थाउजेंड टेन शोड दैट द पैलेस वॉज गवर्नमेंट प्रॉपर्टी बट राजे एंड ललित मोदीज कंपनी नियंत हेरिटेज होटल टर्न इट इन टू अ हाई एंड लग्जरी होटल विद नो रोल ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कि ललित मोदी से सुषमा जी के भी रिश्ते हैं ललित मोदी से वसुंधरा राजे के भी रिश्ते हैं और इसमें कुछ ना कुछ सहूलियतें मिली हैं ललित मोदी को ललित ये लोग अगर इस पोजीशन पर नहीं रहते तो वो सहूलियतें शायद उनको न मिल पाती द बीजेपी हैज रिफ्यूटेड द एलिगेशन विद स्टेट पार्टी लीडर्स क्लेमिंग दे है डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू डिस कांग्रेस क्लेम्स हमने सभी बातों का तथ्यों के आधार पर हमने आप लोगों के माध्यम से पूरे देश की जनता के सामने हमने इस बात को रखा है क्योंकि हम सच है बुद्ध कांग्रेस एंड आम आदमी पार्टी आर डिमांडिंग रेजिग्नेशन ऑफ फोर बीजेपी मिनिस्टर्स इंक्लूडिंग एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर सुषमा स्वराज एंड राजे एच मिनिस्टर स्मृति ईरानी एंड महाराष्ट्र मिनिस्टर पंकजा मुंडे प्रधानमंत्री को आगे बढ़कर बोलना तो चाहिए कि ये सब झूठे हैं इन पे कोई कई बार कार्रवाइया नहीं होगी हमें आगे बढ़ना है या कहे की हाँ इस पे कुछ न कुछ है तो हम जाँच बिठाएंगे और दूध का दूध पानी का पानी होना चाहिए Swaraj and Rajya are facing criticism over the help they gave to former IPL chairman Lalit Modi to procure British travel papers while Smriti Irani is facing a court complaint on furnishing incorrect details to the election commission Pankaj Munde has been accused of involvement in a multi crore scam Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV And now for more updates from across the country here's nationwide The National Investigation Agency today arrested a top NSC and Kaplang group leader Kumlo Abiyanal. He is allegedly involved in the June 4th massacre of 18 army personnel in Chandil district in Manipur. He has been sent in 9 days of remand. This is the first arrest in the case. The government has made yoga compulsory for the armed forces. They've been asked to implement these directions on a priority and ensure that yoga is practiced even at active duty areas. The center has also sought a compliance report from each force. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha flagged off the first train of the Chennai Metro Rail today. She inaugurated the service via live video from the state secretariat. The first schedule started today at 12:15 p.m. from Alandar Station to Coimbatore. Delhi Lieutenant Governor Najib Jang today ordered a magisterial inquiry into the daring jail break incident at Tihar Jail where two under trials managed to escape. The inquiry will also review the security setup of Delhi prisons along with the circumstances leading to the jail break. While one of the convicts has been caught, the other is still missing. And with that a quick break here still ahead BCCI gives a clean chit to three players accused by Lalit Modi of accepting bribes during IPL details of that ahead No repeat of the Great Depression, says the RBI governor, clarifying on crisis projections. But it's a warning nonetheless. What does it hold for India and the global economy? Watch the big picture at 9:30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, in a major boost to economic diplomacy, India and Thailand have agreed, uh, in fact, signed several key agreements, including a double taxation avoidance treaty. This provides the framework to avoid double taxation and fiscal evasion with respect to taxes. On the security front, both countries exchanged the instruments of ratification on the extradition treaty inked in 2013. On the final day of a three-day official visit to Thailand. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj inked a number of important agreements with her Thai counterpart. The most important one being the Double Taxation Avoidance Treaty. This treaty not only provides the framework to avoid double taxation but also prevents fiscal evasion with respect to taxes. Seeking to further enhance bilateral cooperation, 
Both leaders stressed on their commitment to advance common interests. My government attaches great importance to our bilateral partnership and is committed to further enhance the engagement for mutual benefit. Thailand's look west policy and India's act east policy complement very well. His statement was further elaborated by the Thai Foreign Ministry website. It read, and I quote, India's Act East policy reflects its interest in the Dawei Deep Sea port, which is seen as a strategic location connecting India and Southeast Asia through Thailand. Thailand's Look West policy is designed to strengthen cooperation with India and the other South Asian countries. The foreign ministers of both countries also exchanged instruments of ratification on the extradition treaty inked in 2013. This treaty provides the legal framework for seeking extradition of fugitive offenders, including those involved in terrorism, transnational crimes and economic offences. They also signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of Nalanda University. By signing this agreement, Thailand joins other East Asian summit countries in the establishment of Nalanda University in Bihar. An MOU on the establishment of an Ayurveda chair in one of the Thai universities is another big takeaway from Swaraj's Thailand visit. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Another big step towards the establishment of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank was taken on Monday as well, with the member nations, including India, signing the draft charter in Beijing. With a capital of $100 billion, the Asian Bank is designed to finance infrastructure in Asia and rival the World Bank and Asian Development Bank. China hosted the signing ceremony on Monday to kickstart the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank or AIIB. Delegates from 15 nations signed articles that determined their individual share and the bank's initial capital. The new financial institution is set to rival the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. China, India and Russia are the three largest shareholders. Their voting shares are also calculated accordingly. Chinese President Xi Jinping proposed the AIIB in October 2013. A year later, 21 Asian nations, including China, India, Malaysia, Pakistan and Singapore, signed an agreement to establish the bank. The UK, Germany, Australia and South Korea are among the founding members. The AIIB will have an authorized capital of 100 billion US dollars, while Asian countries will contribute up to 75% of the total capital. Each member will be allocated a share of the quota based on their economic size. The bank headquartered in Beijing will fund Asian energy, transport and infrastructure projects. Japan and the US that oppose the AIIB are the most prominent countries not to join. While the US questioned AIIB's governance standards, China hailed the founding of the bank as a historic day. Let me also highlight the great importance that Switzerland attaches to the compliance with international standards in terms of governance, transparency and best practices. World Bank President Jim Kong Kim welcomed the signing of the Articles of Agreement. The AIIB is expected to go into operation later this year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here are some more international news and updates in Global Buzz. As talks on the Iran nuclear deal advance in Vienna, EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini has said that though it was not impossible to get an accord by the self-imposed deadline, a few extra days may be needed. The United States, Russia, China, France, Britain, Germany and Iran are in the final phase of negotiations on how to decide to grant Iran sanctions relief in exchange for curtailing its nuclear activities. The suspected Islamist militant held for decap decap decapitating his boss in an attack on a Fran fac factory in France has admitted to his crime. Yasin Salhi admitted to killing his manager. His mobile phone also revealed that he took a selfie with the severed head and sent the image via a messaging application to a Canadian phone number.
Taliban militants killed 11 Afghan soldiers in an ambush in Herat province late on Sunday. Police say a convoy of pickup trucks was attacked by the militants on Sunday. The fighting went on for five hours in which six other soldiers were also injured. The Taliban have increased attacks in Afghanistan on security forces since late April. The World Heritage Committee of UNESCO has called violent attacks on heritage sites as war crimes. The World Heritage Body is holding its 39th session in Bonn. During the 10-day-long meeting, the World Heritage Committee would also be examining proposals to add 37 sites to the World Heritage List. Nominations for the list this year include five natural sites, 31 cultural sites and one mixed site. All right, on to cricket news now and Harbhajan Singh will stage a comeback to the ODI squad after a gap of four years as a second string team was today named for the next month's tour of Zimbabwe. In fact, the selectors opted to rest most of the senior players. Regular test and ODI skippers MS Dhoni and Virat Kohli will be missing in action. Openers Rohit Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan and off-spinner R Ashwin too have been rested. The changes were made after a disastrous ODI series against Bangladesh recently. In their absence, Ajinkya Rahane will lead the side. Apart from uh, Harbhajan, uh, Robin Uttapa also made a return to the ODI side. Sandeep Sharma and Karan Sharma were also included in the team. Indian team did not do well on last tour of Bangladesh. And if you feel that we did not do well, we also felt the same. It is not that... Uh, we need major changes, but we have to move forward. And considering the domestic cricket to be played and international cricket to be played by Indian team, we have picked this side. Meanwhile, BCCI has given a clean chit to three cricketers accused by Lalit Modi of accepting bribes during the IPL. BCCI Secretary Anurag Thakur rejected the charges after ICC acknowledged a letter from Modi accusing the players of getting around 20 crore rupees each. Meanwhile, a Delhi court today deferred its order on framing of charges in the IPL 6 spot-fixing case in which suspended cricketers Ajay Chandela, S. Srisant and Anki Chavan are accused. These three players are international players. They fall under the jurisdiction of the International Cricket Council. So they have to conduct an inquiry on their own. They have to come out with a report. If they have come out with a report, they have not informed us as of now. There is no such information from the ICC against these players. There is nothing as of now. So of course, yes. If there is nothing against them, then in a way, it is a clean jet for them to play. And away from cricket, let's get you some other sports news now in Sports Beat. Indian shuttlers Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Ponapa have won the Canada Open Badminton Championship. They defeated the top-seeded Dutch pair of Muskins Piek by 21-19, 21-16. This was the Indian shuttlers' first title since their reunion after the 2012 London Olympics. Olympic bronze medalist Vijender Singh has turned professional, ruling himself out of the Rio Olympics next year. Vijender's decision means that he will no longer be eligible to represent India. He has signed a multi-year promotional agreement with Queensbury Promotions through IIS Sports and Entertainment that will see him fight a minimum of six times in the first year. On day one of Wimbledon, world number one Novak Djokovic defeated Germany's Philipp Kohlschreiber 6-4, 6-4, 6-4 to move to the second round. In the women's singles, top-seeded Serena Williams defeated Russia's Margarita Gasparian 6-4, 6-1 in the first round. In the men's doubles, defending champions Vasek uh, Pospisil and Jack Sock defeated doubles pair of Sam Groth and Sergei Stakowski 5-7, 7-6, 7-6, 6-1. And that's all we could get you on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.